Welcome back to CETV. Today we've got something really exciting. We've got a few of the crew with us and we've got a really new product from one of our favorite brands. Come back soon and check it out. Welcome back to CETV. I'm Howard Frank, and today we've got with us from the team, Ian, Robin, and Isabel, who have been trying out the latest and greatest from our good friends at Fujifilm. Super excited. Isabel's got, what have you got with you here? X100, which one's that? That's the X100 V. So, look at this, look at this. X100 VI, Mark VI. Some people say that a bit differently, but look at this little beauty right here. So we've been pretty happy. Our guys at Fuji have sent this over for us to play with for a few days. Ian, Robin and Isabel have all got various incarnations of the first five models. And so we thought it'd be perfect for them to go and do it. So what do you guys reckon? It's amazing. It's, yeah, it's a big step up from the previous model. What's different about it? The fact that it's got IBIS now built in, it's got 20 film simulations. The lens, version two of the lens, is still the same 23 millimeter uh, at two but it is improved, it's for the 40 megapixel, which is also new, the new sensor, new Im image processor, um, same battery, improved EVF. It's just, it's a great little camera. <laughs> what did you think is? I think it's amazing. It's like one of the best cameras I've ever photographed with. And it got even better, a little bit better. So the first time that I heard about this camera, I was like, yeah, whatever. What can they, what can they improve in a camera that is already perfect? Um, more megapixels and image stabilization. Image stabilization makes a very uh, huge difference for those people that photograph on the go. And I feel like this camera is almost built for street photography and it makes a huge difference. It really uh, helps stabilize that image when sometimes you need to put a little bit of a lower shutter speed as well. Yep. And that really helps. So I mean, street photography, obviously you guys all do a bit of street. Great camera for that with the wall ground 23 or 35 equivalent F2. Six stop Ibis now. How, how important is that? Like, Robbie, did you end up going to the night shots at the market? Uh, unfortunately not. My son was six, so I didn't make it out for a night shoot. But I did get around the local marina mm -hmm. and out around the beaches and even just down to Lake Joondalup taking photos of birds, which with the subject detection autofocus made it really easy. Uh, the Ibis definitely did help because I was out there first thing in the morning on Saturday. It was cloudy, it was fairly dark, and the Ibis did help with longer exposures. Yeah, cool. What did you think, Ian? Me, I've had these since uh, 2011, so it's these uh, incremental improvements the whole way. So I'm looking forward to giving this Ibis a good run for uh, low light stuff. And with the 40 meg, have any of you guys tried actually using that as a, I suppose, a, a zoom, if you like, and cropping in on it a bit? I've been cropping mm -hmm. for a long time, so I'm happy to to be able to uh, get a bit further. I actually taken a photo from the car um, in the city and I I kind of wanted the BHP building to be in the middle of a bunch of little flowers and I took the photo, but it's really, really far away. So I have the full version of the photo and the top version of the photo to show you guys. And it's incredible. That's like one of the biggest differences. You can crop a lot more in and the other thing that I thought it was very interesting as well is the low light capability. Um, when you think about the specs of this camera, it has more um, JPEGs um, and then therefore when that happens, you lose on low light capability, yeah. right? Um, and then I was like, oh, I'm a very, very big low light person. I photograph live music all the time. So I need that 2.0. I need that low light situation capability going well. And I thought, oh, there is more megapixels. Somehow it's going to interfere with my low light situation. And to be honest with you, I love this camera, but it's not the best in low light. Every now and again, I just leave it with the big voice because this doesn't really cut for low light. And I took that out and I took some photos with ISO of 10,000 and it's behaving better than um, 
my main gear that I should professionally. So you were shooting at a fringe event a couple of days ago with this, right? Yeah. So did you do a sort of bit of behind the scenes or anything like that with it in, in and around dressing rooms? Yes, I did. And I also took a shot. So like when when there is the concert going on, there is enough light. Um, so you can put the eyes a little bit more down. I also took a photo of outside from like people and I had to put the ISO at 10,000 and in this camera here it's just not going to cut at all yeah. and the images there you guys can see it there is basically no noise and all of the images that we're putting in here as well they are JPEG straight from the camera because we took all of those photos before even got released so we don't even have access to the DNGs so that's all JPEG straight from the camera yeah perfect and were you using the Ibis for that as well, or you didn't need it when you were at 10,000? It's about it there, so um, because it has Im image stabilization, as soon as you take the photo, it's just there. Um, you don't need to turn it on. You can turn it off if you want to, because that's when you're putting on a tripod, right? Correct. One of the other things that this does now is 6.2K video, which is a huge step up for such a little camera. I was using that on the weekend to, uh, my, my daughter was running around outside and I was chasing her around with it and Ibis definitely came in handy there. And the focus just locked onto her, locked onto her eye and it was just fantastic to you. Great. When you said chasing her around, I thought about that as well. So um, on my X100V, don't get me wrong, X100V, this camera is one of my favorite cameras of all time. Like you guys know that, right? Um, every time that I, I take the face out, the face recognition out, because I just find it easier to nail the focus by me finding the face of the person rather than letting my camera find the face. It just doesn't happen that way. With that one, on the other hand, it finds one eye, the other eye very, very easily and also keeps a little square into the person's body as well. So you, if you, if it's a person that's walking that way, it keeps the square in there as well if you can't really find the, the eyes. But it find the eyes a lot faster than mine. And it's just very, very responsive. As soon as you find the little box, you press, uh, half press and then click and your photo is sharp as I haven't seen before. And the other thing that I was a bit confused, a bit uh, worried about this camera as well, it's because they kept the same lenses and they're giving us a way better um, sensor. So usually when that happens, the image gets soft. And that's what I thought was going to happen, but somehow the image is more sharp. So they gave us more megapixel and the low lights a lot better. And um, they gave us a better sensor and not losing any resolution on the, the sharpness of Plus the... a much faster processor as well, and the improved AVF. Yeah. Yes. How was the AVF? Really clear. It's, um, I'm not sure of the specifications on it, but comparing it to the X100V and then using the X100 6 VI, it's a big difference. It's a lot clearer, it's a lot smoother. You can set it up to 120 frames a second if you really want that smooth viewfinder experience. It's, it's really good. The viewfinder of the Fuji, it's already very, very good as it is. Like I always have this joke that when you're reviewing your image on the back of the viewfinder or like when you put it in there to have a look, it just looks a lot better than the photo actually is. And now it's even better. There's some sort of black magic. So, so with the with the people and subject detection in, in the focus now, there's probably some good applications for that. For, you know, maybe if you're doing street photography and, and someone's moving around quickly and it's low light, uh, but also in your live music and concerts and stuff like that, if somebody's running around on stage and you lock in on them and, and just mail what they're doing either for some, some decent video yeah. or... And it stays, the little box go with you the whole time, really stays on. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, the only thing I would like to point it out as like a negative out of this camera and for the time that I had it, it's the only negative point. Um, the battery drains a little bit faster than the X100V. Yeah. Which is expected, but I, I feel like I need to mention this. Um, it is expected for many reasons. So uh, there's a lot of people that are complaining about the size of the battery. It's a compact, compact camera needs a compact battery. That's to begin with. Not to mention that the extra battery fits in here. You can fit two extra batteries in there. So it's great. Um, it's tiny, you can have more than one and it just goes. Uh, so maybe when you're shooting in the middle of the day, just turn the Ibis off or something like that. I'm sure the Ibis will be using it a fair bit. Um, it's everything. So the the new um, out of focus makes it spend more as well. The the sensor itself, so it's solely, it's just 
how the sensor works and all of the bits and pieces that it's involved with that sensor just going to take more battery. So even if you turn it off or like, you know, take out the review image and all that, it's still going to go faster than the X100V. But then again, my X100V, I shoot with it every day. I only charge my camera once a week. Yeah. That said, though, the firmware in this camera is version 1.0, so I'm sure Fuji are going to come out with some updates. They're really good with their firmware updates, so that is something that may improve in future revisions. Oh, they're definitely yeah. first in class with supporting their customers by continuing to almost give them a new camera with how well they update the firmware. Absolutely, and a three-year warranty in Australia as well. Yeah, definitely. So, guys, I know you all use the camera a little bit separately as well that we've spoken to, but uh, you also went off a couple of days ago and in the 44-degree heat did a... Um, did a little group shoot together where you had all of the different six X100s with us. I think you went down near the beach or something. So we uh, we met up at Scarborough and uh, had a walk around. So we had, uh, all of us had, you know, the, the various X100s and we're doing some, quite some comparisons and swapping and rotating and you're really getting a feel for the improvements and the differences. Uh, great way to start a 40 degree day <laughs> around on the beach in the sun. So. It was funny as well that what is the odds, but we find people that really likes the X100 series as well. And they come at us and they're like, oh my God, you guys have the X100? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we were very responsible and we, we taped over a model number. But yeah. So Ian, what was your favorite shot you took on the day? Uh, I haven't actually seen it properly yet, but um, there was a lady you guys can walking see across it. with a, uh, she sort of saw it go across the, footpath with a surfboard and then tried to sort of follow her down and frame her. I tried to get the clock tower, the surfboard and the Scarborough Beach sign and the palm trees. I'm not sure you have how successful that was, but... Um, they are looking at this image, Rana. Yeah, you haven't even seen it yet. Not I really no. liked the other one that you've taken off the scooters. The as purple well. scooters and the, 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 the clock tail. All um, about tower. composition. <laughs> <laughs> You're Need more rough tabs. <laughs> and what about you, Robin? Uh, so I was, um, it was a big green grassy hill down at Scarborough and I was standing sort of on the opposite side of that and I've got a person walking along and I managed to pick up focus of them between two palm trees and think, and that's by night. Yeah, no, I hope. Again, haven't seen them. So if it's rubbish, it's his photo. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are seeing it. I have seen them all. And what about you, Is? Um, I've taken the hoop. Oh, if I don't know if I take any good photos, but you guys can see it in there. Um, one thing that I've made sure that I would take it though, it's the same scene. So this X100 has 20 film simulations. It's the first X that have that many film simulations. So I've taken the photo of the same scene with all the 20 different ones. So people can have a feel of all of the looks that you can have with just one camera in your hand. As well. Yeah, cool. Mm. What's your favorite film sim? Uh, it's hard because I like the new one, but I think it's just because it's a new one in my brain, you know. Eventually I'll swap it around a little bit, but I like my own film simulation. So I do a film simulation that's very close to the cine still. Okay. Film. That's an interesting point we didn't cover. You guys all shoot film quite regularly as well as shooting digitally. Mm -hmm. How do you find film simulations in camera in general compared to shooting film? Like why would you choose one way or the other? Because what? it's cheaper. Yeah. It's, <laughs> much, it's much cheaper than shooting film. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've shot film for years. It's um, sometimes the, the digital is just too crisp and too too real. Sometimes you, know, sometimes you want a little imperfection or a, um, you know, it's, I don't know. It just gives it like a little atmosphere and um, it's more feeling, more yeah. soul. Yeah. yeah, I just think it is. I mean, shooting film for years previously, it, it is a bit nostalgic as well to have that i feel like it's the mystery as well like you frame it and then you know think about the light think about everything you press the button and you have no idea what the heck happened until you develop the film so this this little like i'm not too sure and then when you get the film and everything worked perfectly it's just a lot more magical than you being able to see two seconds after you actually taken it with all of that said though for people that like film, this is the camera as well because it's the digital ones that it has like the closer feeling of, you know, the grain that we do show with us is just simple enough. Yeah, you definitely it's, you, you spoiled the choice for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's such a flexible camera. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of like Velvia 50 or something like that, the old Velvia. I think that's a nice one, but that's, that's an option. Um, both Ed and I shoot a lot of black and white and there's 
uh, across with uh, uh, red, yellow, and green filters, I think, are all available as options in here. So, yep. Well, there you go, guys. That's our wrap on the new X100 VI or Mark VI, depending on your lingo. Thanks so much to the awesome team, Ian, Robin, and Isabel, for their review and their thoughts on the camera. And uh, come and check them out soon. Getting announced uh, right now and available in store from the 28th of Feb. But don't forget you get that bonus battery for the first month shopping with us. Don't forget, like and subscribe, Camera Electronic YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, cameraelectronic.com.au. We love photography. Thanks for watching.